competitors here range from professional triathletes to lawyers to doctors and many teachers. But there's only one adventure racer who happens to be a female firefighter. I'm not a triathlete. I'm a Rottweiler competing with, with a bunch of greyhounds. Robin Benacasa has started and finished this race three times before. Iron Man taught me how to be hard, how to be just mentally hard and to suffer. And I took that and brought it to adventure racing. They have traveled here from every corner of the world. For ten non-stop days and nights, they must hike, mountain climb, paddle, ride, and race through some of the most captivating yet dangerous terrain in one of the last great wilderness areas on Earth. Are you guys ready for an awesome adventure this afternoon? <laughs> Alright, today we're going to have an amazing adventure. We're going to explore Australia, New Zealand, Ecuador, but more importantly we're going to explore the human spirit and the little things that allow groups of ordinary people to accomplish extraordinary things together and the magic that happens when you create true human synergy with your team. I suppose my biggest claim to fame in sport adventure racing is my teams have won the world championships a few times. We've won the Eco Challenge in Borneo, the Raid Galois in Ecuador. Our sport is one in which you have teams of four people, one of which must be a man, one of which must be a woman, and you are traveling nonstop, day and night, over hill and dale. They will drop you in the middle of nowhere with a map and a compass, and you have to stay with your teammates for seven to ten days nonstop doing whatever it takes to get from point A to point B. Team builders are ruled by a hope of success and not the fear of failure. So very often we're looking behind us just trying to stay ahead, worrying, am I going to fail, is this going to be okay? I used to have a teammate that whenever I looked behind me, because I was a racer that always focused on just staying ahead of the competition, you don't win races by just staying ahead of the competition. You win races by doing what it takes to win races. And every time I turned around, he'd always <laughs> take my head and spin it around and go, winning is that way. <laughs> and pretty soon I came to realize, you know what, it's not about not losing, it's about doing what it takes to win. Commitment does not start at the start line. Everybody shows up to a race, everyone shows up to a project, ready to go, full blast, hair on fire, really excited. I'll tell you where commitment starts. Commitment starts when the fun stops. It's real, real easy when you first start in this business to be all fired up and excited about it, isn't it? Commitment really starts when it's not as much fun anymore. When you're getting home from work late at night, when you haven't made your calls for that day, when you just want to get one or two more in for that day and you just don't feel like it. That's where commitment starts. Now what's human synergy and how is it different from teamwork? Well, human synergy is teamwork basically supersized. Human synergy says that we're not just walking side by side together towards a common goal. Sometimes we're literally carrying one another. And that's what we're here to talk about today, helping you build your businesses through human synergy. And we're going to do it the fun way. I'm going to teach it to you the most fun way I know, and that's through the sport of adventure racing. On the ridge to Eton Peak, the lead teams are learning that things are not always as they seem. There's a fake false summit. It'll be soul destroying when they get there and realize they've only gone a third of the way and now need to descend and climb higher and higher than ever before. It just takes such courage to overcome the expectation of something being easy and then to find out it's really, really hard. That's what Eco Challenge is all about though. Digging deep in your soul and keeping going. It's a race about character. I remember that whole entire section being a very, very difficult one for me. I was pushed to my limit. It was incredibly hot. My feet hurt so, so, so bad. The terrain was really uneven, and the section was a lot longer than we ever dreamed it was. So my expectations of having a nice, short caving section and a run back to the beach became this six-hour night marathon on really, really bad feet with the team right on our heel. 